thanks to all of our session speakers. So first question, uh, Joachim, I'm going to draw out this question and just ask you to answer it uh, in real time here. Would you explain how Ethereum 2 is not secure as mentioned in the last slide? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, so it turns out that uh, the beacon chain uh, as it's currently uh, specified and as it's described in Gasper, this uh, kind of academic uh, simplified version of it, um, so the, the beacon chain consists of two parts. One is a fork choice rule called LMD ghost. Uh, and the other part is a finality gadget called Casper FFG. And it turns out that this fork choice rule is susceptible to, uh, balancing attacks. So basically the adversary can, uh, schedule their messages, uh, in a slightly careful way and then make the network, uh, build, uh, even, even, even an adversary with almost no stake can make uh, the network build two parallel chains, two forks uh, that just go on indefinitely and uh, the network will never reach consensus. Um, I have linked uh, on Slack uh, to two E3 surge posts uh, where these uh, attacks are described in detail. I was just uh, wondering you know, why forward secure signatures were not being uh, considered. Yeah, indeed. I'm, I've just checked the the, the 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 Slack message, and I think uh, yeah, pretty much everything he said is that uh, I think this like um, like key evolving thing. Uh, it assumed that some participant needs that the participant needs to be honest at the time of when they are doing the protocol, but really they don't really have an incentive to delete their keys, right? So I think that's the main thing. Is like oh, when in a rational model that it's it's a trick that doesn't really apply in the rational model. So that's. That's the thing um, why 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 we are we are doing this. So to be more more robust even against rational rational players. So Marco made made this argument uh, at the at the beginning that you know we should think of of Bitcoin in in a different way. So so potentially not not as a, a payment system, but as a, a potential route of trust for for uh, other uh, protocols and other chains. Uh, given this uh, checkpointing into proof of work discussions, how do you uh, see uh, the, the the future of of Bitcoin and its usefulness? And also uh, going to to the biggest point that Marco uh, to the bigger point that Marco was making, how do you perceive the the uh, energy waste or energy usage uh, of Bitcoin compared to to the advantage that that it provides and it's the requirement of a proof of work chain for for checkpointing? It's true that um, you know that checkpointing into Bitcoin also like there there could be the argument of oh well but then it's not really like proof of stake you know we are not really like improving the the security but um, and that's that's like a, a valid argument that it, indeed it is like relying on on proof of work but also like this is like kind of like the cost of security and. Um, and if we have, you know, one big secure proof of work chain, um, and then all the other projects that are less, um, like more efficient, that's also like a good, maybe a good thing to have less less proof of work, but at least some proof of work for for the the, the security guarantees. So one question here: so so if if Bitcoin is to become like the root of trust for everything, and everything depends on it, then we, we might have a problem because it could be argued that. Uh, you know, the energy burned to maintain the proof of work system should be proportional to the, the value that is secured. So if, if it secures everything, then it means that the energy burn goes up like, like crazy, right? Because otherwise it would be too easy to attack it. So uh, does this argument hold or uh, is there a flaw in this argument? That's an excellent question, if I may answer. It, uh, it, it enforces the consensus on the root of trust. I believe it enforces the, the social consensus if it goes that way. Uh, it enforces the social consensus on what is the root of trust. And then, yes, you are expending energy to secure whatever needs to be secured. But this energy is not wasted because it secures what needs to be secured. Okay, but, but is the argument that the energy consumption is proportional to, to what's at stake, basically, correct? Meaning that the, uh, the more uh, uh, things rely on Bitcoin, then the more energy you will consume. So, so, so I, I think the, the more, yeah, the, you definitely consume more energy. Uh, if you want to attack the system, you always have the dilemma that Satoshi mentioned in the white paper. If you can attack the system, do you want to bring it down or do you want to join to actually participate in it? That, that's always the dilemma for the attacker. Imagine a really powerful 
nations, like there are very few nations that can attack it at this moment, but they would be facing this dilemma. So they need to engage this power to attack Bitcoin. And that's only basically to double spend in certain things. Right? They are basically, in this case, they might uh, subvert our solution to checkpointing, arguably, because you go and double spend on things. Uh, but there is only a certain number of attacks. For example, you cannot attack monetary policy, right? And there is there are certain attacks that you're not able to pull up. But at that moment, you're deciding, okay, am I going to engage all this power available to me to actually play the game or to attack the game? And as the as the power basically of the as Bitcoin grows on that comparison to, you know, it spends as much energy as Poland or something like that, and it grows on that list. The danger of the attack reduces for nation states because you cannot mount, mount the attack unless you have a breakthrough, unless you have nuclear plants, and unless you have fusion reactors in future. You know, every this sort of stuff. But it's an int- so, so we are playing here as a, as a as a planet, as a species. We are playing a very interesting game. So from game theory perspective, this is incredible. But and just to, to to finish on this, I think indeed it's 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 a very good point, and that indeed if we do this, like there is going to be more at stake on the Bitcoin like blockchain, and it's true that maybe then you will need like more power to be secure. But also there is uh, the proof of stake that is still going to to do like um, to going to have other assumption about the security, right? So there is this kind of like two level of security. There is like the power that you need to get in the to attack the Bitcoin uh, blockchain, but also um, you know if you really want to to mount like this attack you also need to have the, uh, the to mount the attack on the second layer which is the proof of stake so there is this kind of like two level two level of security basically and it's a good question on like how should like how should the security be spread between the two like can they be combined can um that's 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 an open, open question so my question is kind of similar to the previous one but on a more uh, moral and abstract level so for me one of the big selling points of trying to move towards proof of stake or different kinds of consensus is that um, well, a lot of people argue that the, the big power draw from Bitcoin is actually a bad thing. So my question was specifically for Sarah, aren't you, aren't you um, not quite moving in the right direction by trying to tie back security properties to Bitcoin, whereas we should be trying to escape from using Bitcoin or proof of work altogether? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the argument here is like, even though, uh, well, so first, you know, not everyone agrees whether it's wasteful or no Bitcoin, as Marco already talked about, but uh, like the point is like, even if it's wasteful, like, I mean, our observation is like today, we just don't have the same security guarantees, right? So that's why we 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 are doing this. So yeah, sure, like there is some... Um, Again, like it's kind, of, so it's kind of like um, not the pure proof of stake energy efficient system that we can have. But then, if we want to have like the security, and if you think that anyway, if you're gonna have like proof of stake system, you're gonna have like Bitcoin is not gonna disappear, right? So, uh, so at least in the meantime, I think it's a good way to secure secure proof of stake system. Maybe one day I don't know, like I don't know what the future is gonna be. Um, but at the moment, it's like a choice of like security. Okay, hey, great. Thanks everyone for jumping in and, and initiating some conversation.